You may be seated. Thank you, musicians. It's great to see a different bassist up there tonight. <laughs> this church is blessed with a variety of musicians that can do a variety of things. We serve a great big God. I want to talk tonight, we'll start off in the book of John, John chapter 10. John chapter 10 and we'll start at verse 1. The Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, John chapter 10 and we'll start in verse 1. This is Jesus talking. Um, he's actually talking based on, well, let's read it. We'll, we'll start in chapter 9 and verse 40 because that's, you know, Jesus is talking. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. So Jesus spoke this parable to the Pharisees. And the Pharisees were not followers of Jesus. They hung around him a lot, but they were not his disciples. The Pharisees were very comfortable with their way of doing things. They rebuked people that didn't follow what they believed was right, that didn't meet their expectations, or didn't follow their interpretation of the law. If you were a Pharisee, then according to the Pharisees, you were unclean, you were not devout, and you were unsaved. That was according to the Pharisees. But Jesus upset this thinking. And he called the Pharisees thieves and robbers. In other places, he calls them hypocrites and all sorts of things. Jesus, though, said his sheep would hear his voice and follow him. Jesus said he was the door that his sheep would walk through. And he said he was the good shepherd. He said he called his sheep by name. And it's a question asked by many people. How do I hear the voice of God? So my title tonight is Hearing God's Voice. Which I thought was cool. Young people who don't know what chords are, um, those things hanging off the headset, that's a chord. And the thing at the end of the chord is called a jack. And that got plugged into circular devices and you could then listen to music. Harrison's nodding like he knows. I'm surprised because I thought they'd disinvented those things by the time you came along. But clearly you have vintage parents or retro parents and um, have discovered what that is. And for those of you that only do electronic things, the thing on the, on the right is called a Bible. And that's a book. And that's something that you hold and turn pages on as opposed to just flick through on some sort of device. Uh, just giving some background. But I want to talk tonight about hearing God's voice. And it's a question, who's ever taught a home Bible study to somebody? Okay. If you've ever taught a home Bible study to somebody, you're likely to have heard the question, how do I hear God's voice? How do I know God's talking to me? How do I? And I want to answer that question tonight. Hearing God's voice. In 1 Samuel all the way back in the Old Testament. If you get to Judges, you've gone too far. But 1 Samuel, and we'll start at chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 1. So we're talking about hearing God's voice tonight. And I want to discuss how we can hear God's voice. But we need some ground rules. 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 1. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. 
And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called Samuel and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here I am, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not, lie down again. And he went and laid down. Jump down to verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be if he call thee that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. I find this story interesting. And there's a few reasons for that. One is Samuel is apparently sleeping in the tabernacle. He's sleeping where the lamp is. So Samuel is right there in the presence of God. Samuel is working with Eli. Samuel is um, hanging around the the tabernacle, working around the tabernacle. But there's no open vision. God is not speaking to everybody all the time. And God speaks to Samuel... And Samuel hears the voice of God, but doesn't yet know the Lord. So Samuel rushes off to Eli, the only other person around that it could be, and says, hey, you wanted me. So he thinks it must be the voice of Eli that's calling to him. And after a few times, three times in fact, Eli says, it's not me. And Eli goes, oh, it's God. Oh, When you hear the voice next calling you, say, speak, Lord, your servant hears you. And Samuel then began a relationship with God. So in 1 Samuel chapter 16, and we'll, we'll come back to get some principles out of these, but in 1 Samuel chapter 16, And verse 1, And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, "Take Take an heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? So Samuel developed a relationship with God to the point that he could then have conversation with God. God says, Go do this. And Samuel's like, But I'll die. And God says, well, here, do this as well. Take a heifer with you and things are going to be okay. So Samuel developed his relationship to a point where he could ask questions and be obedient to the voice of God. In 1 Kings chapter 19, so just two books over, 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings. So we're looking at 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19 and we're going to start at verse 9. 1 Kings chapter 19, starting at verse 9. And this is God. And he came hither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And he, God, and he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the 
after the fire a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Elijah is a man of God. He's a prophet of God. If you read through, he's just um, been with the prophets of Baal and he's just seen them all killed because they were false prophets. And then he runs away because the queen's mean. And he hides in a cave. And so he's a man of God. He's heard the voice of God, but he is full of doubt and confusion and despair. And so God has to get his attention. So God speaks to him and Elijah is not sure anymore whether he's hearing the voice of God. And so God sends a wind and an earthquake and a fire. That all makes sure he's got Elijah's attention and then speaks in a still small voice, which Elijah hears again and responds to. So how do we hear the voice of God? God hasn't changed. The Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. God hasn't changed, and God still speaks. And he promises in John 10 that if we are his sheep, we will hear his voice, which means we can expect, if we're God's sheep, to hear the voice of God, because that's how we follow him. We hear his voice. He calls us by name. We respond. We follow after his voice. So we need to know how we hear the voice of God. Samuel was in the temple. Samuel was where, or tabernacle, I keep saying temple, I mean tabernacle, the tent. Temple wasn't built for about 80 more years, but same place. So, Samuel is in and around where God is. And if you want to hear the voice of God, you need to be in and around where God is. So you need to be at church. You need to be developing a relationship with God. You need to be where God is at if you want to hear his voice. If I want to hear Lolly's voice, it's probably good to be somewhere Lolly's at. That could be at home, probably if it's me probably at home Uh, it could be down the shops recently I was standing at a train station this wasn't a lolly story I was standing at a train station and I'm reading and I'm waiting for my train and I think I just hung up from lolly on the phone actually and um, I'm standing at the train station and someone comes over to me and goes hey how you going and I went hi and this will horrify you They said, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm going home, of course. And then I realized who it was. It was my younger brother. (laughs) Because, like, what's he doing on my train station? Like, it's not right that he's here. He wasn't where I expected him to be. So I'm responding to his voice going, well, I know this person. (laughs) Somehow. Oh, it's you, James. Hi, how are you going? Great to see you. And because he's out of context. But if we're going to hear somebody's voice, we need to be where they're at. And so Samuel is in the presence of God, but doesn't yet know the Lord. Okay, so he's not experienced God's voice before, but he's where God is for God to speak to him. So if you want God to talk to you, first thing, be where he's at. So be at church. You also need to be spending time with him like Samuel was. So is Jesus welcome in your home? He might not be. You say, oh, you're at church, right? So at church you say, of course Jesus is welcome in my home. But he might not be welcome in your home. You might be busy in your home doing all sorts of other things that means Jesus isn't welcome in your home. Do you make time for him in your house? Am I having time in prayer in my house? Am I spending time reading his word in my house? How can I hear the voice of God at home if he's not welcome at home? So if you want to hear the voice of God, you need Jesus to be welcome in your home. That might mean, heaven forbid, turning off Netflix. Might mean that. 
it might mean shutting down your device. Because you need to hear the voice of God. You need to start hanging out where God hangs out. Now, Tao's out of school. I was not yet engaged, Dolly. We weren't even dating yet. Okay, just to clarify, we weren't dating yet. We were going out as friends. I'd invited a friend, Lolly, out for dinner. And we were sitting at the dinner table enjoying a meal. Actually, it hadn't really started yet. We'd barely ordered the food. But Lolly's phone went... And Lolly went, oh, check, 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 oh, text, text, text. Lolly's phone went... Lolly went, oh, check, 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 check. And I said to Lolly, are you here with me or are you here with that person? Because if you want to be with that person, I'll take you home and you can be with that person. That's okay. We're just friends. We're having dinner. And sometimes it's the same with us and God. Are you here with me or are you here with that person? Who do you want to spend time with? And if you sit down for your quiet time with Jesus, and that means opening up your phone and scrolling through Facebook, you're not there with Jesus. You're pretending you're there with Jesus, but you're not there with Jesus. Sorry, Facebook is this old thing that old people use. I mean Instagram or Snapchat. Um, you've got to be relevant, Sister Pauline, and it's challenging at times. But that's if you're spending time with God... That means actually spending time with God, not with Instagram, not with Snapchat. And when you go, oh, I'm just playing Candy Crush, it's not a big deal. Well, you're actually playing Candy Crush, not spending time with God. And if you want to hear God's voice, he has to be welcome. So that may mean horrors, putting some things away so that you can spend time with God. Lolly went, I'm here with you, and her phone disappeared into her handbag. And shortly thereafter, we started dating, and shortly thereafter, we were engaged, and a bit after that, we were married. But she could have made a different choice that night and said, no, no, I'm with this person. I'm wanting to interact here. So we hear the voice of God. You hear the voice of the people you're around, and you learn and discover their voice. We... My brother and I, James, who I've already mentioned, have very similar voices. And years and years and years and years and years ago, a, a young lady called me on my phone to talk to me, but I was driving and didn't want to talk. And so I handed the phone to my brother and said, here, you answer it. And he talked to her for a good five minutes and ended the conversation and she thought she'd talk to me. That's what she thought. I apologize. Live on TV now. I apologize to both those people. Um, a few years ago, I was at my brother's house. And we said, let's call mum. Because she wasn't expecting me to be at my brother's house. Let's call mum and see if she can tell. So we called mum. Hi mum, how are you going? It's Dan. She, or James, because she called from James's phone. It's James, how are you going? Yeah, yeah, good baby, how are you? He gets baby boy, I don't get baby boy. Good baby boy, how are you? Yak, 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 I'm talking. And then James comes on the line and then I'm back on the line and then James gets on the line and mum's like, that was Daniel, right? Because while we sound alike to someone that knows us, it's not the same person. And it's the same with God. And there are times when the devil will imitate the voice of God. But if you've built a relationship with God, you go, that's not God. But to know that, you have to have a relationship with God. If you don't have a relationship with God, you will be confused by the voices that you hear. So when you hear a voice that sounds like God, you need to check. In Galatians chapter 1, New Testament, between Corinthians and Hebrews, in Galatians chapter 1, before Ephesians, and I took the slow route, Galatians chapter 1, Galatians chapter 1 and verse 15 
Galatians chapter 1 and verse 15. This is Paul writing, and he says, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. So Paul, who has this encounter with God on the road to Damascus, repents, goes into Damascus, is filled with the Holy Spirit, is baptized in Jesus' name, his blinded eyes were literally open. Scales fell from his eyes. He's healed of blindness and begins to preach. He then disappears out into Arabia by himself and doesn't have a big discussion with flesh and blood, but is apparently hearing the voice of God. But you know what he did after three years? He went into Jerusalem and spent 15 days with Peter, the apostle Peter, the disciple Peter who had spent three and a half years with Jesus. And so Peter knows the voice of God. Peter had been privileged. He'd walked with Jesus for three and a half years. So he knew the voice of God very well. And so Paul could check with Peter, is this right? Have I understood this correctly? Am I right here? Have I heard the voice of God correctly in this area? And spends 15 days making sure that what he's calling the voice of God is the voice of God, which confirmed it for Paul. Paul was like, okay, that's the voice of God. And yourself, you, as you hear the voice of God, because God wants to talk to you. If you're here tonight, it means you probably want to hear the voice of God. And God, I know, wants to talk to you. But if you're not sure, check. Find somebody older than you in the gospel and say, I think God said this to me. Is that right? And then have that person confirm the word of God to you. We have very godly leaders in this church. Pastor Hogburn, Reverend Gabriel. Go to them and say, I think God said this to me. And let them confirm the word to you. So that you can begin to go, yes, that is the voice of God. Yes, that is what God said to me. Or, oh no, that wasn't right. Oh no, didn't get that right. That wasn't God. Listen and check. In Judges chapter 6, Judges chapter 6, so back before 1 Samuel, Judges chapter 6, sorry, I'm assuming you're using paper Bibles, uh, J-U-D for electronic people. Judges chapter 6 and verse 17. And I like this, I, 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 I find there's some humor in this story. Um, Lolly and I were talking this afternoon, and we're like, yeah, God does have a sense of humor, and he will sometimes make you laugh. It's absolutely true, and I think God wrote the Bible, just so you're aware. He used people to do it, but God wrote the Bible. Judges chapter 6 and verse 17, And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Gideon says to God, If I found grace in your sight, then let me know that it's really you. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee and bring forth my present and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid and unleavened. Kid is a baby goat, not a small child. Ready a kid. I watched heart go, who? A baby goat heart. We're okay. And unleavened cakes of an ephah of flour, the flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and brought it out unto him under the oak, and presented it. And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes, and lay them upon this rock, and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand, and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock, and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes." Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said, oh, sorry, Alas, O Lord God, 
for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. I just find it interesting that Gideon's like, Is that you, God, talking to me? Demonstrate that it's you. And brings out the offering, and God touches the offering, and it fire, and then God disappears. The angel of the Lord disappears. And Gideon's like, I'm not going to die now. I've just seen God, I'm going to die. Until then, he wasn't particularly afraid, apparently. Um, but at that point, he became afraid. But, and God had to say, it's going to be okay, you're not going to die. The, when we hear the voice of God, I've said check with an elder, but ask, God, if that's really you, show me a sign. Let me know. And for Gideon, the sign was so overwhelming. It was like, I'm going to die now. That was too much. Be aware. If you say, God, give me a sign, the sign might be too much. But you can ask. Because God wants to have a relationship with you. God wants you to know his voice. And so if you say, God, is that you talking to me? Expect God to answer with a yes. An overwhelming yes that makes you go, I think I'm going to die. But a yes. God wants to have a relationship with you. We read in John 10, we're his sheep. And we hear his voice. And he calls us by name. And we can know him because he knows us. So when you hear the voice of God, God's not looking for you to go, is that, I don't know, how can I ask? God, is that you? If that's you, let me know. There's, in this church, we expect God to talk to us. It's an expectation. We expect God to show up at church. It's, that's what we expect. We expect God to talk to us at home. We expect God to speak to us in our daily life. We expect to be in a relationship with God and that God would talk to us. That's our expectation. And when we first, when I first, and I've confirmed this with Lolly, it's a similar experience. When I first started hearing the voice of God, God would say, go and pray with brother so-and-so. Oh, I'm too shy. I'm too nervous. That's not really the voice of God. No, I'm not. I'm making that up. That's all in my own head. And then somebody else would get up and go and pray with brother so-and-so. I'm like, oh, maybe that was the voice of God. Next week, whatever, go and pray with brother so-and-so. Oh, no, that's, oh, couldn't do it. No, that's not, oh, that's not really the, vo no, no, no. And someone else will go and pray with brother so-and-so. And you go, oh, I am hearing the voice of God. In this church you heard tonight, I'm used in interpretation. But before I was willing to step out and be used in interpretation, God would give me the word of interpretation. Oh, no, it's not the voice of God. No, I'm not hearing it. No, that's not. No, no. And Sister Ball or Trevor or somebody else would give the interpretation exactly the same words that God had given to me. I'm like, oh, that is the voice of God. Then it's a case of overcoming your nerves and choosing to speak. But God would confirm to me that the voice I was hearing was the voice of God. And the way he would confirm that is by having someone else say the words that God had put in my heart to speak. I hear the voice of God. Now, I'm not like Samuel. Samuel got to hear the voice of God and rushed off thinking Eli had spoken to him. So I, didn't, I don't hear the voice of God here. That's not where I hear the voice of God. For me, now you have your own relationship with God, okay? So God will speak to you how you will hear him. For me, when God talks to me, I get what I describe as a thought feeling. Which doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's the best way I can describe it. I get a thought and a feeling at the same time. That goes, this is how God... And so that's I've discovered that's how God talks to me. Now... Lolly has similar things. When, we, when I talk to God, God always talks to me in love. Even when he's telling me off, he's talking to me in love. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So he's not condemning, he's not tearing down, he's not destroying. Okay, God speaks in love. So even when I'm being told off, and I do get told off by God because I do sometimes do things wrong, God speaks to me in love. But I can't force God to talk to me. 
And sometimes God, when I'm sitting waiting for God to talk, he doesn't say anything at all. But sometimes he does. And there are times when I'll have conversations with God back and forth, back and forth. God this, yeah, yeah, that, that. God, but what about? And this and this. And, but God, what about? And this and this. I will have conversations with God. And other times I'll say, God, what about? And God will go, and this. But, but what about? The answer doesn't change. It's, this, is what we've, this is what I've said and this is what it is. But you have to learn to hear the voice of God. I can hear tone with God. Now, Lolly has said to me in the past, you're Daniel, you're perfect. That's what I heard. I heard, you're Daniel, you're perfect. What she said was, you're Daniel, you're perfect. But I choose not to hear tone, right? But with God, with God I can hear tone. I can, it's, it's, I can hear how he's talking to me. Because I've built a relationship with God. And so you can hear the voice of God and you can build a relationship with God. Because that's what... I asked Brother Otto before service, and Sister Pauline, you can correct him if he's wrong. I asked Brother Otto before service how long he's been married to Sister Pauline. And he said 52 years. I'm assuming that's correct. That's Yes, well done, Brother Otto. Um, he knows the voice of his wife. He wanted to sit somewhere tonight. And Sister Pauline said, sit here next to me. And Brother Otto went, okay. <laughs> because he knows his wife. He knows tone. He knows her. 52 years of spending time with somebody. He knows what, come and sit here next to me, means oi, here, now. <laughs> After 52 years, he knows that. And... I've only been married 10 years. I choose sometimes not to hear oi here now and instead just hear the dulcet tones of I love you, you're amazing, um, even though that not, might not be what she said at all. But we hear the voice of God and if you spend time with God, you get to hear the voice of God. You build relationship. That's what it's about. You have to check though, when you're first encountering God. But in John chapter 10 and verse 10, and this is another way to check whether the voice you are hearing is the voice of God. John chapter 10 and verse 10. So I'm just, how do we know it's the voice of God, right? So we're checking with leadership, we're checking with God. John 10, 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So if the voice you are hearing is asking you to kill, to destroy, to steal, that is not the voice of God. That is the voice of a thief and a robber. If, if you are hearing the voice of God, it is a voice that will speak life, hope, redemption. Now, I'm not saying that sometimes it's not a hard word. It might be you're in sin and you need to set your life right. But it's not a you're in sin now and you need to die. That is not, that's the voice of a thief and a robber, the voice of God. Jesus came that we might have life and life more abundantly. So if the word that you are hearing is telling you to steal, kill or destroy yourself or someone else, that is not the voice of God. The voice of God speaks life and life more abundantly. So we need to check the word of God or the voice of God. If it's not here or if the principles that you're, you've heard are not here, it's not the voice of God. God speaks through his word and God's voice to you will not be dis. Will, will be the same as what his word says. A couple of weeks ago, last week, last week I was preaching, I song led in the morning and I preached in the night. And I had heard, I knew what I was preaching on. I was 
comfortable that it was what God wanted to speak to the congregation. But it wasn't a, oh, Jesus loves us message. It was a, a little more difficult than that. And, but I knew it was God, what God wanted me to speak. But I spent almost the entire Sunday going, I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I don't even know why I'm bothering. This is the voice in my head. I don't even know why I'm bothering. Why are you bothering to, to be here? Why are you bothering to think you can preach? Why are you? And partway through the worship service in the evening, I realized that that wasn't God's voice. Well, I kind of knew that, but I thought it was my voice. And then I realized, hang on, that's not my voice either. That's the devil trying to undermine, undercut, make me doubt the word that God had for his people. And partway through the song service, I'm like, hang on, that's, that's condemnation, that's not conviction, that's destruction, that's death, that's stealing, that's, de that's destroying, that's not God at all. I don't have to listen to that voice. And I went, I'm not listening to that voice anymore. That is not the voice of God. And I went, okay, God, I'm going to listen to you. And as soon as I went, as soon as I recognized that that was not the voice of God, the voice went silent. And I could then hear, all right, God, I'm going to listen for your voice. And so we do hear whether they're our own thoughts, whether they're the devil putting thoughts in our minds. We do hear other voices. But we need to go, okay, is that the voice of God? And so we need to be aware of those things. Now, God can speak to you in dreams. God can speak to you in dreams. There are people in this church that have had dreams that have come from God. God can speak to you in dreams. God can speak to you in visions. Visions are sort of kind of waking dreams, but like visions are hard to describe. I've, I've had one vision, as I recall, in my life. And it was a very short image of a cup being, water being poured out of a cup. That was the vision. It was a like a photograph. So uh, God can speak in visions. God can speak to you directly through his word. You have to open it for him to speak to you through it. But God can speak to you through his word. God will speak to you across this pulpit. God will speak to you in a conversation with people, assuming they're people of God. God will speak to you directly through a prophetic word, a tongue and interpretation. God will speak to you in those things. So you need, you, 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 God can talk in a, in a variety of ways. And God has spoken to me in a variety of ways. But the most consistent way that God speaks to me Right? So this is how God talks to me. I want to emphasize, you are in your own relationship with God. Okay? So the way God talks to you will be different to how it may be different to how he talks to me. God talks to me with those thought feelings that I mentioned before. That's, that's the most consistent way God talks to me. Okay? So when I have that, I'm like, okay, that's the voice of God. But I have occasionally had dreams. I have occasionally had visions. And, but they, they're not the normal way God talks to me. But I've learned to hear the voice of God. And God will now interrupt my day-to-day -day activity. I've hung around church. I spend time with God at home. God will now interrupt me. I know the voice of God. And this is going to sound a little silly. But one day I was driving home from an appointment. And I was coming down South Gippsland Highway. And the short way, the quick way to my house is South Gippsland Highway, round to McDonald's, and in past McDonald's into my house. But I was coming down to the Pound Road thing. And God said to me, while I'm driving, take Pound Road. And I went, what? No. Because I don't always listen to the voice of God. Now, when we listen to the voice of God, we should be obedient to it. This is, not, this is what happens when you're not obedient to the voice of God. God said, take pound road. I went, because I'm not expecting God to give me traffic instructions. Okay, I'm just not expecting it. So I'm like, oh, well, that was clearly my voice. That was clearly me. And I analyzed it and went, oh, well, that wasn't God's voice. And God said, take pound road. And I went, 
that's ridiculous. So, and just ignored the voice of God. I crossed Pound Road, stopped in traffic and was stuck for 45 minutes. Because God actually cares about me. God actually is interested in me. God wants me to have a good life, life more abundantly. And I thought Pound Road was not life more abundantly. I just, it, I thought God didn't care about traffic. But God cares, doesn't care about traffic, he cares about me. And so in that instance, I decided it wasn't the voice of God, even though everything about it was the voice of God. I decided because how could God speak to me while I'm driving and care about traffic, that it wasn't the voice of God, but it was. It was absolutely the voice of God trying to get me home at a reasonable hour. 45 minutes later, I did get through the door. But that's, but I, because I've built a relationship with God, God can speak to me in traffic, about traffic, because I've got that relationship with God. You can have, if you don't have already, the same relationship with God where God will and can interrupt you. If you are not hearing the voice of God, be quiet. Stop filling your life with things. If you're not hearing the voice of God, go, I'm, for, for this next short period of time, I'm not interacting with others. Don't open Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram. Don't get out your phone to play a game. Don't decide to ca quickly catch up on your mail. Don't take that up. Oh, I've been meaning to talk to so-and-so. Stop. Be quiet and say, all right, God, I'm here to talk to you. Now, God may not talk to you the first time you do that. He may not, but you might be surprised at, that he might. So just go, all right, God, I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to hear, I'm willing to hear what you've got to say to me. And then, give God a few moments, but open his word. God, if I'm not going to hear you speak to me through my ears or a thought feeling or however it is that God talks to you, open your word. God, I need to hear from you. Open his word. Let him talk to you through his word. But you need to stop. Are you at dinner with me or are you dinner with the person on the phone? And it's the same with God. Am I here with God or am I actually somewhere else? Is my mind somewhere else? So we can and should be hearing the voice of God. We need to stop and spend time with him. Lolly and I have been married 10 years. I'm very glad. She puts up with a lot. I put up with a lot less. She puts up with a lot. But we spend time together. Now, we could stay married for the next 10 years, but if I never talked to her for the next 10 years, the relationship would not... We wouldn't, we, you couldn't consider us being in a relationship if we never spoke to each other. We could stay married, the signature could stay on the form, but we're no, no longer in relationship. With God, it's the same. You need to talk to him and have him talk to you. And God wants to talk to you. Jesus wants to transform your life. John chapter 10 is Jesus saying, I am the good shepherd. Verse, John 10 verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. You can know God and God will know you. God wants to talk to you. So tonight, we're all going to stand. Because we're in the house of God, we're in the right place to hear God's voice. In a second, we're in the right place to hear God's voice. Hopefully, you've put your devices away so that you're not distracted. Hopefully, you're not talking to the person sitting next to you. And I realized before church, the pastor's wife was talking right before church. But hopefully, you're not talking to the person next to you. Now, the Bible doesn't say, I don't, I'm not aware, if I'm wrong, the pastor can correct this, this what I'm about to say. I'm not aware that the Bible says when you pray, close your eyes. 
But the reason I close my eyes when I'm praying is so I'm not distracted by what's visually happening in front of me. If I'm driving and praying, my eyes are open because I don't want to hurt anybody else. But if I'm praying, I often close my eyes because I don't want to be distracted. So we're all standing, so hopefully you won't fall asleep standing up. But what I would like you to do, all of us to do, is for one minute, not long, hopefully one minute, one minute, just stop and say, God, don't talk out loud. Say, God, I want you to talk to me and I'm willing to listen. So we're going to do that for a minute starting now. 